Here we go. Hello, everyone. This is Christopher Prosh with Veterans for America First, the Chaplain Corps. We are here today with a wonderful, wonderful woman, uh, Lisa Babbage. Lisa, go ahead and uh, take it away. Hey, everybody. Uh, yes, I'm Dr. Lisa Babbage coming to you from Georgia. So excited to be a part of this conversation and looking forward to what's going to be happening in this election season. Absolutely. Absolutely. Dr. Lisa Babbage is a celebrated author. That's her uh, That's her main focus. And she had a, uh, a book that came out recently. Um, Lisa, let's talk a little bit about that first and foremost before we dive on into, uh, into election day today. And if you haven't already, please get out and vote. <clears throat> Right. <laughs> so the book is the Black History Bible. And if I can indulge uh, your listeners, it came about in a very interesting way. I was running for Congress in 2020 and a black pastor in Atlanta reached out to me and he offered help. And I said, you know, I don't know what you can do personally, pastor, but pray. And he said, as we talked back and forth, that he wanted me to write a book that would be a source of information for our people to show the deception that has taken place over the last 70 years. And he challenged me to put that book out for Black History Month. And that became the Black mm -hmm. History Bible. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, tell us a little bit about, about it. You know, give us a couple of examples of what's in it. So, I mean, this, sure. this book is fantastic. It basically really hits hard on the fallacies and on the fake history that's being literally rewritten for our, own, our very own eyes about, you know, the real history of, of, of a group of people that have had an amazing impact on American history, uh, you know, black history. Um, so, you know, this book really eviscerates, you know, how um, black America should not be voting Democrat at all. They have never been a friend to that community um, history in the 1800s and the 1900s. And even today, you know, um, even with you know, President you know, Barack Obama being the first African-American president, um, I have plenty of, of reverends and pastors and, you know, uh, African-American friends, you know, who are saying we expected a lot from him, but he actually made things worse. So and it's just it's it's unfortunate. And, um, you know, so it really gets into that. So, uh, Lisa, you know, please give us a couple of examples if you if you, you know, please could. Certainly. Certainly. And let me just first say that, you know, I, I sympathize and I um I regret Barack Obama's presidency, not just because he didn't do all that was expected, but the pressure on the man, I have to say, I'm glad it wasn't me <laughs> to be the quote unquote first black uh, president, which, you know, he, he literally wasn't, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, that's the kind of pressure I don't want. So, you know, I, I have grace for that um, because I did vote for him the first time. You know, mm -hmm. I drank the Kool-Aid like so many people. <laughs> the reason why the Black History Bible is so important is because it is attempting to deprogram Black America. And honestly, I've got a follow up that's going to come out to it. But as far as examples, you asked specifically, you know, Johnson, we've heard the quotes about I'm going to have Black people voting Democrat for the rest of their lives. Well, that plan came about under a deception. And that is the premise behind the book. We turned it into a documentary because a picture is worth a thousand words. The documentary is called Systematic Deception. We're talking about how the Democrat Party has systematically put policies and procedures in place to manipulate Black America, capitalize off of Black pain. We all know that Black America was key in building this nation. Mm -hmm. And what they have done is try to pigeonhole Black America to the plantation, even today. And as she said, they've never been a friend. Blacks have been historically Republican because of President Lincoln, you mm -hmm. know, the first Republican president. Uh, in his Emancipation Proclamation, he saw, this nation saw, the greatest Black wealth happen right after the Emancipation Proclamation. Mm -hmm. That was under a Republican government. And to this day, Republicans have always believed in principles that elevate all communities, Black, white, purple. You know, we're talking about small government. We're talking about yeah. taxes that make sense to benefit the country versus taxes that keep people enslaved to an economic plantation. And that's what we have right now. Mm -hmm. the, the sinisterness of it comes behind when Black preachers, for example, unquote, Reverend Warnock, who is siding with policies that have seen the destruction of Black America. I mean, right now, just on one singular issue alone, we are at the rate of not being able to replace ourselves because abortion has so targeted Black America. We have, you know, single women who are being celebrated for kicking the man out of the house. Mm -hmm. And they are being subsidized by mm -hmm. our government and socialistic narratives. Yep. And I go into this in the book. 
that that makes sure that there is no family unit for Black America. Exactly. Um, you can go into education, critical race theory. All of this is part of a greater global conversation that the Democrats have been pushing in America for many, many years. Yeah, a hundred percent, Lisa. You know that that's that's really my my issue. You know, with with the Democratic Party. You know, they're they're fantastic <laughs> at, at manipulation and lies. You know, this is the party of Correct. this is the party you know of slavery. You know, in the in the seventh Jim Crow. Yeah, Jim Crow, absolutely. And 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 what's funny is Democrats love to rewrite history. And 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 one of the biggest initial you know lies that they always promoted was, oh well, you know the big switch happened. You know, Southern right. Democrats were actually Republicans, and back in the '60s and '70s, you know, Southern Democrats became Republicans because the South became industrialized. First off, that's the biggest lie ever purported, ever per- perpetrated among the American people. You know, if, if you actually go into Texas, Alabama, Georgia, West Virginia, political party strength and when it really flipped texas didn't go republican until about 1992 until and and it went hard red in about 94 alabama georgia the exact same thing west virginia did not go uh republican until about 2007 so it's just the the, what they're what they're you know putting out there is just completely lies it's complete garbage and then you go back into presidential there's no evidence to back up There's no evidence to back up a big switch. The whole idea of Juneteenth is because Texas still had slaves. So there was no big switch. I mean, you know, unfortunately, we are in a culture that we are just uh, receiving and taking in whatever someone's throwing out there. And the Democrats have a um, master manipulation propaganda machine going forth with our news. But, yeah. you know, I don't I don't think that's the biggest lie. I don't think the big switch is the biggest lie. And I'm just going to throw in yeah. my two cents here. The Please biggest do. lie happened in our last presidential election. Oh. That was the big lie. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. And, and, we'll, and we'll get to that, too. But, you know, I mean, even even presidential history. Let's go back to that. Even, you know, Woodrow yeah. Wilson, a Democrat, a horrible right. socialist Democrat. He had the KKK over at the White House on three separate occasions. Never gets talked about in the U.S. history. Lyndon Johnson, he, he was caught on video recordings using disparaging comments about the black Americans trying to say, well, I'll get those people to vote for a Democrat for the next hundred years. I'm like, but that doesn't get talked about, you know, or how about more recently? And this is just, this just blows my mind. This actually happened at um, at Senator Byrd's funeral in West Virginia. He was a grand wizard of the KKK and he apologized for it later in life. But at his funeral was Bill Clinton and Barack Obama. And what did Bill Clinton say at his funeral? He said, you got to go easy on old bird. Back then in the 60s and 70s, you had to be a part of the KKK to be a Democrat. And I'm like, with Obama sitting right there, I'm like, wow, just the, the complete fabrications that they tell themselves on a daily basis. It's like they get up out of bed, all these Democrats, and they just it's like they stand in front of a mirror and they just tell themselves lie after lie after lie until they believe it. They are fundamentally insane and they are socialists. Well, that's the only way they can live with themselves. But you got to think about it. There is a difference between an African-American, which Barack Obama has partial heritage of, and a Black American. Black Americans actually came through slavery. And the reason why that may not be off-pinning to Barack Obama's, he doesn't have that history. I mean, to be honest with you, I grew up in a government housing project in Atlanta, mm-hmm. right around the corner from one Martin Luther King's childhood home. I oh, understand, oh. you know, the heritage that has been passed down to Black America. Foreign Blacks do not have that same history. Therefore, it should not uh, strike them in the same way it strikes us. But it is an all out affront to our community and frankly, to the idea upon which the constitution is based to have this lie accepted as truth. You know, they take Woodrow Wilson, they have reduced him to a paragraph in our history books, (laughs) you know, because they don't want the truth to come out. What about um, Joe Biden, our current (laughs) president? He has said the same kind of disparaging remarks. He's the author of the 94 crime bill, which has black men in prison today has divided our family up. So this is not ancient history, which people seem to forget. I mean, Stacey Abrams is lockstep behind these heroes, if you will, of the Democrat Party, which are just really agents of hell itself. Exactly. Yeah. Reverend Reverend Warnock, you know, he 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 pretends to be a Christian and and he's anything but he's a pro choice and he's a communist. There's ample evidence to support he is a full fledged communist. He literally had the Cuban dictator 
and his family, Fidel Castro, at his church. I'm just like, oh, my gosh, what are you doing? He is a terrible, horrible man. And, you know, I, I really hope, you know, uh, Georgians, you know, get out today and vote. You know, hopefully, Herschel, I Walker, you know, I mean, we know he'll be a much better representative of the state of Georgia than some communist who's basically whatever Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi want, they they get. And and, and it's just, you know, there, there's an old saying, you know, <laughs> who was I talking to years ago? It was, it was, you know, it was a political colleague of mine. And he made a comment. He said, you know, I got to hand it to Democrats, though. They, you know, whenever Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer speak, they fall in line and they do not buck the system. The problem with Republicans is we're too independent. Whatever whatever Mitch McConnell says, eh, maybe half the Senate will listen. Ted Cruz won't listen. Rand Paul won't listen. You know, maybe half the House will listen. I mean, <laughs> it's just it's hilarious. We're, we're, we're the, the curse the Republicans have is we're almost we're, we're too independent thinking. <laughs> Well, I mean, you know, there, there's stubbornness on both sides. You've got yeah. people who are stubborn and they will fall in with whatever someone's feeding them. And then on, on our side, quote unquote, the two independent side, we're so stubborn that we are chasing each other around the table trying to figure out which good option is the best option. Let's just go with the good option. Let's just go with the good option. Yeah, you no. know, our country is suffering because we have not uh, put our egos aside, to be honest with you. I, I do believe that conservatives, quote unquote, have a lot of the blame in what's happening right now too. And I'm so thankful that in the last year, that big lie that happened back in 2020 has kind of lit a fire under us. And we're more willing to see that instead of fighting over which good idea, let's just take the good idea. Let's fight for it. And, you know, we've seen people get behind Herschel in that way. And it's just been beautiful here in Georgia. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm a little, I was a little concerned about Herschel Walker, you know, from on, on the surface, just because, I mean, I, you know, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm up here in Iowa, you know, and I'm a Minnesota Viking fan. So uh, we're still, we're still a little hurt about the big trade with Herschel Walker, you know, back in the eighties, you know, but he's, you know, Herschel Walker is, he's, he's a great guy. And, you know, we, we think he's, he's phenomenal. Um, you know, and I was, you know, and, and there are some who are speculative that um, the Georgia Republicans um, would overwhelmingly support a, Trumplican, as you would call it, a Trump-backed candidate, a heavily backed, uh, endorsed candidate from from uh, President from former President Trump, and you know, and I was talking to some of my colleagues yesterday, and they said, well, you know, Governor Kemp and Herschel have, you know, they're childhood friends; they, they've known each other for 30, 40 years. So you know that, you know, and and you know, I, I will say, outside of the state of Georgia, you know, Kemp is not well received. I'll just be honest. Um, and not, right. saying, not, right. not saying he's good or bad. I'm just going to take the take the fifth on that one. But it, it is nice, and I do hope that the you know the state Republicans do come out in big support for Herschel because I think he'd be a huge step up from what you guys have. Um, so, but anyway, continuing on. So, <clears throat> yeah, your, your book is is fantastic. It takes a complete you know stab at this all this re his, historical rewritings. You know, and we're seeing it daily. Right. We're seeing it daily. I yeah. mean, you know, I mean, there, what really baffles me, you know, honestly, Lisa is. The fact that, you know, I guess in my opinion, every college, every public school should be teaching the evils of communism and socialism, and they're not. You know, what, what baffles me is everyone knows who Adolf Hitler is, but nobody knows, right. who, but nobody, but if I asked, if I asked 100 random people in this country, 99, I'm certain, I'm certain of this, 99% of them would have no idea who Mao Zedong is. They'd have no idea who Joseph Stalin is. They'd have no idea who, um, oh, who Pol Pot was. It's just, I, I, it's just, and those, and those men were, and, and I hate to use this, but on the grand scale of just death, those men were far worse than, than what Hitler did. And Hitler was terrible, awful. But it, it's yeah. just, we need to have a complete history of tyranny and not just a portion of it. And, 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 you know, and, and as a fun fact, you know, you know, um, yesterday was victims of communism day. And, and what happened? Oh, the wow. media, the media was dead silent and both major political parties right. were also dead silent. Oh, shocker. Weird. So it's just, it's, it's, it's a sad day. And Lisa, you're a hundred percent, right? Let's, let's dive into that too, because you're, you're a hundred percent, right? Conservatives are also to blame for what's, for what's been, right. uh, for what's been happening, you know, and, and president Trump is not perfect by any means, but there's one thing that right. I really, I really appreciate about him. When he came into politics in 2015, he addressed issues that nobody else wanted to talk about, primarily the economy, spending, illegal immigration, which is completely out of control. It has been for 40, 50 years. Um, the embassy in, in, in Tel Aviv to Jerusalem uh, and then oh, and Roe v. Wade. And, 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 and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to be a little, I'm going to be a little uh, aggressive here. Mitch McConnell, Kevin McCarthy, the Republicans, there are, there are a certain number of Republicans who believe that they own the rights to Reagan's legacy and they don't right. and they don't and they have been betraying the Republican base, primarily the Christian base for 40 years yeah. and brought these issues back to light. 
You know, we have conservatives that are not strong Christians. They believe in the conservative um, platform because it works, yep. you know, and money is their God. Exactly. But they vote Republican. <laughs> they vote Republican. And while, you know, our whole mantra is to, re, uh, you know, embrace anyone that can fall in line with those principles that our, our party is based on, we have to differentiate between the Christian conservative yep. and the non-Christian conservative, because that's where this all comes down and what you just laid out. You know, if we were not complicit, all it takes is for, for bad things to go wrong is for a good person to do nothing. Exactly. And that's what had, you know, because we've had control over all three bodies in Washington before, and we've done little to nothing. Yep. So honestly, you know, I love the, the consequence of not only the pandemic, but the election, because now we have no choice but to admit we have to be aggressive across the board, not just to talk about things, but yep. as we pull that lever today and go out and vote. Well, you know, future, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this, you know, future Speaker McCarthy, you know, he's promising a lot. You know, he took a page right out of Newt Gingrich's playbook and said, I'm going to give you a new contract for America. And he's promising, yeah. um, he's promising basically, you know, congressional inquiries into Hunter Biden, into Fauci, which I'm predicting Biden will probably pardon both of them by Christmas. And yeah. then, you know, and, and he's also promising all these successful bills. And people, people have to understand, you know, even if we get the U.S. House back and the U.S. Senate back, let's just say we get both and we're passing great legislation. And let, let's say the best the best happens. We get 250 seats in the House and we get 55, 54 you know, seats in the Senate. We can we can we can we can as a, as a party, we can promote any laws we want and pass them in both chambers. But Biden will absolutely veto all of them. So it's not right. it's not enough to just promote good policy. And again, I'm a little skeptical. We'll see how aggressive McCarthy will be because he's been he's been right. pushing this narrative for a long time. And we'll see. We'll see how aggressive he is. I have my doubts. But, you know, back to, you know, the Christian base, though, God commands us in Exodus 18, 21. Hmm. But select capable men from all the people, men who fear God, who are trustworthy men, who hate dishonest gain and appoint them as officials over thousands, hundreds, fifties, and tens, and of course, millions. And, you know, honestly, Lisa, you know, I'd love to get your opinion here because, you know, I look at, you know, I, I don't see, I don't see a, a single Exodus 1821 candidate in the democratic party. To me, they're all socialists and, you know, they're borderline atheists. Now I look at the Republican party out of the roughly 7,000 Republican candidates we have across the entire country, maybe 50 of them actually meet those criteria. I know 12. <laughs> so between 12 and 50, 12 and 50. But here's the great news about this, Chris, that's more than a remnant. You mm -hmm. know, everyone's been talking about this red wave that they hope magically appears today. You know, look, what if that red wave were the blood of Jesus Christ and yeah. we just got full in office that enough to turn the dial, enough to make sure that this country is saved. We're at that tipping point. You and I both know this. And honestly, you know, folks who have already voted, drive some more to the polls and then get down on your knees and pray that it works in our favor because yes. honestly, the whole world is relying on this election. The yeah. whole world yep. is implicated in this election. Yep. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You're 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 so right, Lisa, and that's why you know we, we love having you on here because you give such a great perspective about you know Black America and your phenomenal book and and, and just the rewriting of it and the lies that perpetuated. That's what we're talking right now. You know, that's why we're talking about the election right now because Americans are sick and tired of being lied to. We're sick and tired of of false promises and fake solutions. You know, and and yeah. and, and and again, President Trump is far from perfect, but he. In my opinion, he was one of the more efficient, more effective people that offered real solutions in just four, in just in, in four short years. And you know, what I always say is that we have to have the right weapon for the job. Yeah. You know, President Trump was the right weapon for the job. You yeah. don't have to. Man. But you have to know that he did what had not been done and what must have been done in that moment. Yep. And I truly that he's going to come back. You know, I just know recently, last mm -hmm. week, as a matter of fact, he received an award from the Friends of Zion for moving yes. that, you know, people have not forgotten President Trump. He still has tons of power, even though his picks in Georgia did not do as well in the primary. Nationwide, his picks did very well. Yeah, 90%. Very well. Yeah, exactly. So it shows that the nation is ready and ripe. Yep. for President Trump to return in 24, and I certainly hope he does. Well, and, and people people forget this, too. He had the largest turnout from Black mm -hmm. America of any Republican presidential nominee and Hispanic turnout, too. You know, and that's that's what's just... Right. And, and I think that's why some 
elitists in the Republican Party don't like it because I think Romney at best got like 12 percent and Trump was toting 20, 25, 30 percent. And that's massive because, again, they've never even gotten that high, and which which is so baffling. You know, I always I always laugh. You know, I, I'm always shocked that the Republican Party doesn't doesn't emphasize more uh, effectiveness, more solutions in like New Hampshire and Maine. And, you know, and I, I <laughs> utilize those states because that's a small example of how the Republicans, you know, I, I will fault them for this. Republicans are terrible at marketing to the Hispanic community, to black America. And I don't know why it, it, it just, it baffles me. I mean, it's not that complicated. The Democrats are systematically trying to ruin black America and have for the better part of 70 years. I mean, I, I talked with a woman just last week about the same issue, planned parented facilities. Why are over what? 75% of them in predominantly minority run neighborhoods, you know, why are right. over 60% of people of women who get abortions are African-American women? Like what, what, why are, I mean, how are we not seeing this? Margaret Sanger was a horrible eugenic racist woman. It, I mean, and, and what even, and even furthermore, I, I honestly, I mean, I, I, I love Candace Owens because she, she made this, she made that, she made this comment one day. She's like, honestly, black America, what have these Democrat control, Democrat run cities, Atlanta, St. Louis, Baltimore, Minneapolis, you know, Chicago, mm -hmm. what have they actually done for you? Nothing. You're, I mean, you can't honestly right. say you're better off now than you were in 1948. Well, you know what? You just gave the statistics from uh, the previous presidential election. It was black mm -hmm. men, was men of color who decided to take a chance because they saw what was happening on the economic front. And that was enough to make them go out and vote some yeah. way different. What we need is for women to come around now. And yeah. I think we've gotten to that point with education where we've stirred mm -hmm. a lot of mama bears who were not <laughs> interested in looking at another party. And now they are because they see that their kids don't know how to read. They see yeah. that this two years of virtual learning has put their next generation behind. And honestly, it's laziness on the part of conservatives who have yep. not done the who have not marketed appropriately. As you said, it's not rocket science. Anybody on the street could figure out a better way than yeah. what many Republicans are doing but not only that it is complacency because of greed you've yeah. got greed on both sides of this coin and you know some people say at the very top of our government it's really just one party the wealthy mm. i tend to believe that there are wealthy people who have a good heart for example i sat down with kelly leffler uh, a couple of weeks ago and a 12 person luncheon and i'm telling you i don't know who she was when she was in dc but she is a very good woman now who is using her platform to further conservative principles not because she needs it yeah you know donald trump didn't because he needed the power it's because these people are trying to save america yeah. and i believe that if Democrats have not seen it at the pump, if they have not seen it with their kids, if they have not seen it at the border, they're going to see it when this red wave comes through yeah. and everything changed for the good. Because the, the manipulation that has taken place, as you said, it's been 70 years. Blacks are conditioned yeah, to be manipulated at this point. Yep. So it's easily done. Yeah. However, when they're living their best lives, as I say on the campaign trail, when you have money in your pocket to do what you want to do, all of a sudden you're thinking a little differently. You're thinking a little different. <laughs> You yeah. recognize, hey, this is not that bad. Yeah. You know, right. I believe that's the trend, the ricochet that we're going to see happen um, in the next couple of days as we yeah. take back the House and the Senate. Yeah, 100 percent. I mean, that, and that's what's happening. I mean, today's a big day, you know, the midterm elections. You know, there, there was some yeah. there, there, there was some um, there was some uh, issues over the weekend, you know, where Trump, you know, fired a shot across the bow to DeSantis and to the Republican Party. And, and, you know, and he endorsed him, obviously, in Miami. And, and, and people need to understand, you know, it's the reason why Trump did that is because, you know, there are reports out there that DeSantis has been meeting with, you know, um, Paul Ryan, Rhino, Kevin McCarthy, speculative at best, about challenging President Trump in the primary. And, you know, I, I agree with the experts that would be a huge mistake on Ron DeSantis's part, just because, again, I don't see what Governor Ron DeSantis gains from the establishment's support. They, 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 they can't fill a stadium like Trump can. They can't fundraise like he can. They don't have the support of the people like he does, which bought, which all three reasons is why they hate him. You know, but it's right. just I mean, it doesn't it doesn't it's not a solution. It's just I 
I don't I don't understand why they they fight him so much, you know, and 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 it's just but anyway, I, you know, that that has been a, an issue heading into this midterm election. You know, what's going to happen? Is it going to be, you know, Trump and DeSantis slugging it out or is Liz Cheney going to be thrown in there or is there going to be another alternative or Dwayne The Rock Johnson going to run too in Florida? And I'm just like, I highly doubt it because then the rumors about WWE is going to come to surface. And he's not going to like that for his credibility. But I mean, my point being is it's, it's going to be very, very interesting. But, you know, Lisa, so, you know, what are you what are you seeing in Georgia? You know, are it are are you know black Americans in Georgia? You know, are they resonating well with Herschel Walker, or is it still kind of oh, Reverend Warnock's been there for only a couple of years, so let's give him another chance? You know, what what are you, what are you seeing? I, I think it's going to be very close, and most people would say that with confidence. But I do think it's coming down to the ballot box, and people are literally going in with this frame of mind that it's a toss up because the slick marketing of Warnock, the smooth talking used car salesman. <laughs> uh, that he has the whole idea that there's nothing to worry about because you know what you're getting with this devil, but we don't know what we're getting with this devil, quote unquote. But I believe Herschel has come across, I mean, he's he's campaigned a ton. And I do believe he's come across as genuine. People love that. They can see that it's not slick marketing. This is who he is. And this is what you're going to get with him, which is great. But here's my prediction. I predict that we're going to take the first and second district in oh. Georgia. One of those districts has been a Democrat for 25 plus years. Um, the other one recently Democrat. I think we're going to be able to take that back. I think we're going to take the sixth and the seventh. I think that you're going to see changes in Georgia that nobody would have predicted. Yeah. No poll can capitalize on what I believe God is going to do in Georgia, because honestly, if you think about our quote unquote tainted history as a nation, it all comes back to the South. Yeah. Georgia is the of the South. And we are positioned to be that first first action of the, the shot heard around the world, if you will, as we start sweeping across our nation. I believe that can happen. And yeah, we've got to be more targeted once we get in there. We've got to do exactly what you said. Make sure that we're using all the strategies in these key swing states that we can perpetuate this election after election. Yeah. Hundred percent, you know, and and you know, Lisa, I really appreciate that perspective, you know, because some would say, you know, Texas, you know, Austin is the capital of the South, and you know, Texas is its own country, in my opinion, you know, and Florida, Florida is its own thing too, you know, you have such a such a uh, uh, you know um, a heavy Hispanic you know presence in the South, then you have the the old retirees in the in the middle, then you have the the, the Southerners in, in the northern part of the state, you know, so Florida, Florida is kind of its own country too, so I mean, that's you, I I do I I will concede, I I do believe Atlanta really is the capital of the South, you know, and 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 they, it's much more powerful than people realize. And, you know, it's, it's the way, Georgia, the way Georgia speaks is, is going to have uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, the, the great uh, Ray Charles, you know, Georgia on my mind, <laughs> but it's just, you know, I, I think the whole country has, I think the whole country has Georgia on their mind right now. So. <laughs> oh, man. Just goes, I think that uh, I'm hoping and praying that he's just getting close enough to the enemy to hear out of their mouth what their plans are so that he can fall behind President Trump. Because honestly, he has relied on him exactly. as governor. He's exactly. going to. You know, so why would you challenge the man? Why would you challenge the man? Well, and people need to people need to realize. And again, I, I think Governor DeSantis is a fantastic governor. He's been a great, great, truly amazing governor. 100 percent. Greatly respect the man. But again, DeSantis, I hope you listen to this. Do not align yourselves with the devils because Paul Ryan and McCarthy, you know, if the rumors are true, you're aligning yourself with fool's gold because they cannot give you what Trump's base can. And number two, and number two, much more importantly, you know, I want to touch, I want to touch on this as well. Mitch McConnell and Kevin McCarthy better, and, and by that, by that, and by that extension, Ronna McDaniel. I've spoken to thousands of pastors and people all over this country. They are pissed off at the Republican establishment. They feel ostracized. They feel forgotten about. And honestly, they've been feeling ignored for a very long time. You know, Black uh, Christians, white Christians, Hispanic Christians, the Republican Party has taken their votes for granted a lot. You know, and and we wanted Roe v. Wade fixed 20 years ago. And who fixed right. it? Who fixed it? Trump did. You know, yeah. who, who moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem when the previous five presidents promised to do so and never did? It's just, again, Trump is far from perfect. But, yeah. the, but the establishment better wake up. If I had it my way, the, the evangelical vote should get together and they should speak with one loud, proud voice and say, look here, Ronna McDaniel, look here, Mitch McConnell. If you don't shape up and get back to biblical law, 
you will right. lose our, you will lose our vote and you'll lose the next 20, 20 years of elections. You know, what I have said time and time again is that, especially Christians, but we have to get out there and stop conceding to the enemy. Why would we compromise and, you know, mince hairs with the enemy? We just need to take what's ours. We need to take dominion. That's what God commanded. Yes. He commanded go into every single sphere of influence in this country, government just being one of them. And it's yeah. it's time that we stopped compromising and saying, well, you can you can have this and I'll have this. No, why did we give up public exactly. school? Yes. Why have we given up the sanctity of our nation and sanctity of life? We we conceded that ground and now we, we've got to go back. Why did we give up hospitals? You know, the church was the right. staple in the community. The churches own the hospitals. The churches own the schools. Absolutely, 100% right, Lisa. It's just, and again, they've taken, I mean, it's just, what, what's happened is, and, and maybe the Republicans are actually a little better at manipulation than I thought, but they basically they basically convinced through, through sinful situationism that, mm -hmm. oh, well, the Democrats are anti-Christian, they're anti-God, they're atheistic, they're big government, they're socialist, which they are. So they basically what, you know, this is kind of the analogy I'm going to use is, you know, the Republican Party and the Christian, basically you have the, the Christian base, about 20, 30, 40 million evangelicals across the country, just at rough estimates. And we're in this giant stronghold. And on the, and on, the, on, the, on, the, on the city gates, on the city walls are the Republicans. And they're promising, oh, we'll protect you. Just trust us. The Democrats are outside the city gates attacking us. We will defend you. And for a long time, that strategy has worked. But I'm talking to so many pastors mm -hmm. inside those city gates saying, I don't trust our gatekeepers anymore. I don't trust our watchtower men. I think it's our actually, I think it's the it's the Republican establishment that has been betraying us and making those concessions on our behalf when they shouldn't be. And, and, coward and, and greed. Cowardness and greed is what those concessions have uh, come from. <laughs> hundred percent, hundred percent, and 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 I'll I'll take it to I'll take a step further. The church has allowed itself to make those concessions because so many pastors, so many reverends, they've betrayed the word of God to have a seat at the table with President Trump, with President Bush, with with President Obama, with with you know with with Senator with Senator McConnell, with House Speaker McCarthy. They want a seat at the table for their own egos, and they leave the Bible and God's biblical law at the door. And they should march into those offices and say, "You have betrayed the word of God too many times. You have lost our vote." <clears throat> well, where are the because when the president was the Johnson Amendment, we didn't we didn't lose that history. President Trump away with the Johnson Amendment. You know, my book, Dominion Mandate, kind of highlights everything Trump did in those four years because we must have a monument to the truth. Yes. But pastors should have taken that initiative to take back what we had conceded all those years because he gave us the authority as president to do so. We didn't. Instead, we cowered in fear. Yep. We allowed them to shut down our houses of worship for what? I still have not figured that out. <laughs> no, 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 Lisa, Lisa. According to Democrats in California, churches should be shut down, but strip clubs can be open. <laughs> and you can get your hair cut. But in rural parts of the state, they never closed. Exactly. They were still having church. You know, so, I mean, this whole thing is just, it's really been indicative of the type of that we've gone to in this country. The level of deception we've gone to these past two years have been indicative of it. It's time for us to take those scales off of our eyes and actually move forward as God has commanded. hundred percent and get back to obedience to his word. Cause that's all God commands of us is obedience to his laws that have not changed for over 4,000 years. And it's just, I mean, I, you know, I, I, you know, what's funny, you know, and I'll close with this cause we're running out of time. You know, I, I'm taking a deep dive, you know, into early church history, you know, 1800 years ago, 1900 years ago with these great, these great theologians, these great, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, continuers, if you will, of, of Jesus and his, and his apostles, you know, and one of them was, you know, Justantine, the martyr. Another one was Polycarp. These men who were such strong Christians, they literally went to the Roman emperor and said, stop persecuting Christians. Your beliefs are wrong. You are a, a heretic. And these, and these emperors could have killed these men in a split second. And a lot of times they tried to. Right. Where, where is our Polycarp? Where's our Justantine, the martyr? When are we going to have good, strong Christian men march to D.C. to our leaders and say, you are wrong? And the, I'm with signs, wonders, the signs and wonders that we have needed to, historically, 
the word of God shows us evidence of people who have always done that, challenged authority based on God's word. Mm -hmm. The signs and wonders of those prophets, of those men and women of God, we are going to see again because we have no choice. I believe God will protect our nation. And that is what we're going to see again. Yeah, 100 percent, 100 percent. And and again, you know, it's just yeah, it's we've you know, God has protected America and loved America for reasons beyond me. You know, I mean, I, I firmly believe that, you know, one of the reasons is we have more churches per capita than anybody else on you know, other country on the planet. But again, we need to wake up and get back to obedience real quick. But Lisa, like I said, fantastic. You know, we will easily promote your book for, for our listeners. You know, please give, give us the title of your book again. So it is the Black History Bible, How the Democrat Party Deceived a People. You can find it on Amazon or on my website, lisanoelbabbage.com. Also check out The Dominion Mandate, which is a book about President Trump and everything he accomplished. Absolutely. 100%. And we will put both those books on our page for you guys to find and buy. Lisa is fantastic. She is an expert in Black history. And again, just so much, just so much of a wealth of knowledge that she brings. So Lisa, really, truly appreciate it. Thank you again. We will have you back on very soon. Chris, I appreciate it. God bless you. Everybody get out and vote. If you're in Georgia, go go vote for Herschel. Run Herschel runs. So. <laughs> All right. Have a great day, everybody.